हेलो गाइज वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल कैनेटो क्लब एंड आज हम लोग सीखने वाले हैं कोविड टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन इट्स नॉट कोविड इट्स नॉट विद वी इट्स विद बी कोविड टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन इट्स अ फ्रेम वर्क यूज इन मोस्ट ऑफ द आई टी कंपनीज विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट इट विद द सेम फाइव डब्ल्यू एंड वन एच रूल एंड वी हैव अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल प्रेजेंटेशन बाय समीक्षा चित्रांशी सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट Hello folks welcome back to our channel I am Samiksha and today we'll be starting with various standards and frameworks followed in an IT and enterprise setup So let's get started with the famous 5W and 1H method to understand the framework better Beginning with who So for today we have COVID 2019 which is nothing but an acronym for control objectives for information and related technology next we have what so it is basically a framework for the governance and management of enterprise information and technology aimed at the whole enterprise so not limited to the it department of any organization but also inclusive it also makes a clear distinction between the governance and management as we see in the figure that the owners and stakeholders their needs conditions and options are put forward to the governing body which evaluates it according to the agreed enterprise objectives and then sets direction based on the prioritization and decision making which is basically responsibility of the board of directors under the leadership of any chairperson hence then the work is delegated to the in the leadership of the chief executive officer and the executive management so the work done by the operations and execution is then reported to the management and is monitored by the governing body and finally delegated to the owners and stakeholders according to their needs and conditions provided beforehand Hence, it serves as a common language between business and IT. Next is when. So, COVID was developed by ISACA, that is the Information Systems Audit and Control Association, in 1996. So, firstly, it was intended to guide the auditors. In 1998, COVID-2 came with a broader version, and in 2000, with COVID-3 covering the management guidelines next from 2005 to 2007 we had various versions of covid that is covid 4.1 covid 4 which also included the it governance part of an any organization next in 2012 we had covid in 2019 the latest iteration of covid 2019 when they had done away with all those 1 2 3 4 5 a uh, numbering and decided to go for covid 2019 the as per the year of launch why do we need to learn about covid 2019 so as they have mentioned in their governance system principles that it provides stakeholders value so it translates the stakeholders needs into specific actionable and customized goals in the context of the enterprise COVID provides a holistic approach of the governance of companies. So, may, be it the process they follow in the company, the organization structure, the information flow, and whether the people are skilled and competent in that or not. Next is they have a dynamic governance system. So, any change in the strategy and technology is impacted into the system design, which is tailored through COVID. next as we already discussed that the governance and management are distinct due to in its core model it has 40 governance and management objectives divided into five domains so the first one which is evaluate direct and monitor focusing on the governance next it is tailored to the enterprise needs regardless of the size location and type of it. the stakeholders needs are delegated to the governing body then it is directed to the management which in turn instructs and aligns to the operations and execution reporting it back to the management and monitored by the governing body 
and finally deliver to the stakeholders next if we look at their governance framework principles it is aligned to the major standards followed and based on the conceptual models which means that it basically covers the key components and relationship between their components maintaining the consistency and as well as integrity firstly it is required to understand the enterprise context and strategy so by enterprise strategy we mean that whether the company is focusing on their revenue growth whether for the enterprise goals they could be the quality of financial information they are recording and their goal could be the business service continuity they are looking for so it could be likewise next step would be determining the initial scope of the governance system so we also supposed to look at the risk profile of this of the enterprise It includes the project life cycle the it expertise of the organization or the hardware and software failure incidents and also we look at the it related issues such as security breaches the next step is refining the scope of the governance system so looking at their threat landscape it could be high it could be low high in case of geopolitical situation arising or also we need to look at their compliance and lastly concluding with the governance system design also it has an implementation cycle so we need to look what are the drivers as i mentioned the goals which could be there and uh, what is their current position what have we already reached the goal or not and what else we can do to keep the momentum going that all forms the implementation approach of the covid 2019 this where so covid 2019 use cases could be one could be the large manufacturing enterprise looking for being the cost leader in the market next could be the medium sized enterprise whose claim is to be giving innovative products could be any high profile government agency which is more adamant to look for their security and privacy in conclusion i would like to mention that it is an umbrella framework since it is a combination of latest relevant standards for more information about covid 2019 their products and training you could visit the website isaka.org thank you for watching Stay tuned for learning the new concepts in and out. Happy learning.